Hey guys, I got an email from Joe at ARS. He's the guy that got us the Dodge 880 Custom owned by the Dodge family and of course the Subaru STI. This time it's a 2007 Bentley Continental convertible as you can see here, pretty trash. It's been sitting somewhere for a long time. There's like stickers and things on it. He's shipping it here for us to clean up, get it ready to go and then out the door for charity. You're not gonna wanna miss this one today on this episode, Drive and Protect. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. More on this coming up. A few hours later, the donation arrived. The Bentley Continental GT is a two-door coupe or convertible grand touring car manufactured by Bentley Motors from 2003 through 2011. This one here is a GTC. In other words, it's a convertible, still with the same 6-liter W12 twin-turbo, 6-speed auto, pushing 550 horse, 0 to 62 in 5.1 seconds, with a top speed of 195 with the top up and 189 with your hair in the wind. The base price in 2007 was nearly $200,000, so we're pretty excited to get her cleaned up and off to a new home, and at the same time, raise some money for charity so everyone wins. This car has been donated to the National Public Radio, specifically WDET in Detroit. Now, in our last car donation episode, that was for the Special Olympics, and it was a Subaru Impreza STI. It did really, really well. Click the link in the description to check out the auction and for all the other cars available. I very much appreciate all of your continued support as we raise awareness of reputable car donation organizations to encourage others to donate their cars to the dozens of amazing charities in need of your generosity. And remember, you also get a tax deduction from Uncle Sam as well. So click the link down below to find out how you can help. Inside and under the lights, you can see the paint is very, very swirled, scratched, and scuffed. And the rims are dull and rusty. The windows have banned notices from what seems like a decade ago. And the interior is incredibly raunchy. There's French fries, mold, and lots of body oil residue, likely from being a drop top in a hot climate like Texas. The engine is covered in dust and grease, so the car needs a whole lot of help. It's been neglected for sure. No one's doubting that. So the first step is to get her up in the air and see what's underneath. With the lugs loosened on the ground, I then use the nifty Bentley center badge puller thing, believe it or not, that's an OEM part, to pop out the round Bentley logo. Then I pulled the five spoke hubcaps covering the lug nuts as well. Naturally, the third wheel needed a very minor love tap from the sledgehammer and she wiggled right off the hub. With everything off and the car up in the air, it is very obvious someone went for an off-road adventure in the Bentley, very muddy and dirty underneath and in the wheel wells as too, so this needs a serious back. Then I coated everything in ammo foam and ammo boost and let it do its work. On the calipers, I used Titan 12 first because of the oil and grease buildup. Usually I would start off with plum, but something was going on there, so it was a lot more oil than, than normal. Then I foamed everything before scrubbing and rinsing. Now at this point, with all the oils now gone, we're sort of back to normal. I went after the brake dust with Ammo Plum wheel cleaner and a brush again, as I would normally do. This took a few more rounds of cleaning because of the years of baked on and baked in brake dust. What happens is that those calipers heat up with all the brake dust in there and they kind of just penetrate and they heat up and they cool down, heat up and cool down, and they just become further and further embedded. So you do need to take some time on older cars like this. Look at the mud pouring out of the wheel well liners. You can't tell me someone didn't have a good time off road. Next, I power wash the band notices off the window before foaming the entire car. Well guys, you know what time it is, it's Squarespace time. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful platform on which to create your very own website. You can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content and manage your members, send email communication and leverage the audience insights all in one easy to use platform. Create a community on your Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies and likes. You can even use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share and schedule posts too. 
You can also extend Squarespace already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. Display posts from your social profiles to your website and automatically push website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share it too, like this one here. Go to squarespace.com for your free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash ammo NYC to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Now, back to the Bentley. All right, when it comes to the Bentley, one of my favorite parts of any Bentley is the beautiful grill. Now you can see there's 8 billion little holes here. So that's where the Mini Wooly comes in. The only problem is I got a little bit of time on my hands here, but you got to get every one of them. I'll be here for a little bit. But then again, it is a Bentley. I have to get one of these one time in my life. They're just so cool. On the engine, the grease stains are messing up my beautiful intake manifolds, so I used Titan again and a wheel brush to lift the oils, and then I power washed everything away. Now, one of the most common questions I get around clay is what kind of clay do you use? Do you use a clay bar? Do you use a clay mitt? And what kind of clay do you use? So to make a very long story short, um, this was designed or invented in Japan really to take off overspray in a much faster way than sanding. And then it translated down to detailing. Look at that, that is just crazy. It's like blackheads on your nose, <laughs> peeling it off. Anyhow, the reason uh, that I use a clay um, patty like this versus a clay mitt is I tend to think clay mitts, they're great if you're doing lots of cars at once. Let's say you're at a dealership and you had to get like 50 of them done, you can kind of blast through there. That's how I perceive a clay mitt. You kind of clean it off the best you can, but it is what it is. When it comes to a clay patty like this or a clay bar, I can do this. I can knead it and now I'll have a nice fresh piece right there. See how it's still pretty white? And then I can go back in and, and, and continue kneading it. You can't really knead it with, with, a, towel, with a, uh, a pad. The other thing is I can mold it around my finger. So if I need to get into a tight spot here, I can mold it where I feel like maybe sometimes I can't do that with a, with a huge pad. It kind of bumps up against it. So you can, you can manipulate it any way you want. I prefer these, but there's no really right answer. The other question is what types of uh, clay bars are there? There's light, medium, and heavy. Heavy typically, I believe, is really more towards body shop kind of thing when you have tons and tons of overspray. Medium, you can use on, uh, let's say, a car that sits outside for years and years and years and it's really bad. Um, but I tend to lean towards, like this one here, is light clay. The reason why is if you clay the paint and it's not um, a very hard surface, you are going to scratch it. So keep that in mind as well. So I know that I'm going in and polishing this. If I wasn't gonna polish it, you really have to be sure. A lot of times I'll be like, ooh, oh, a tree hit this one right here. I'll go like that real quick. Ooh, get that off. And then maybe I just have to polish that one area. So the point being is if you clay your car and it's because it's Tuesday or whatever, you're gonna probably have to go in and do a light polish or maybe a one-step polish. So keep all of those things in mind. This is a great tool, but only pull it out when you need it. It's kind of like the emergency room. You only go to the emergency room when you need it. It's not, you don't go there because it's Tuesday. Keep that kind of mentality in mind when you're talking about clay bars. All right, lastly, a lot of people ask, hey, can you use clay on glass? And the answer is yes, totally. When you're cleaning glass, uh, just get it lubricated. You come in here and then the difference between using it on paint and glass for me is you can really kind of take your day out on the glass, push as hard as you can. And what that's gonna do is make your wipers work a whole lot better because there's nothing standing up and sticking up and grabbing the wipers where you have the streaks. You can minimize a lot of that. Again, sometimes it's the wiper itself, but if it is the glass, this is a great thing to do to pull those pores out. Again, you can also use a razor blade, but if you have the clay bar out, I like to run it over the glass as well. You'll see a big difference, nice and smooth. Uh, again, this assumes you don't have a coating on the glass as well, so keep that in mind. But clay can be really helpful on the paint and the glass. Then I dried everything with compressed air and my ultra plush blue microfiber towel. This and all the tools and products I'm using can be found at AmmoNYC.com and our brand new store, AmmoNYC.au for Australia. We're super excited about opening up a new location in Sydney for easy and quick shipping countrywide. Next, I focus on the wheels with Plum Wheel Cleaner as these have been really beaten up over the years.
after I washed everything off, it looks a thousand times better. But of course, in the tight spots, in the edges here, there's a little bit of buildup. So what I do is I take the tiniest piece of four aught steel wool, put a little plumb on it, just like this, and gently get in the corner. I'm barely touching, and I'm using the steel wool. It's kind of like millions and millions of little razor blades, and they're just kind of slicing the top layers off. And you don't want to go too much because obviously we're not trying to scratch the chrome, but I do need to get the embedded rust off. So I'll go back in afterwards and I'll hit it with polish and kind of clean up the very fine, you are gonna put little fine marks in there, but this is just something you need to do to kind of get that last little bit. And now it's perfectly clean. Okay, there's a little bit of marring in there, quick polish and it comes right out. So this is the, the best method if what I just did doesn't get it 100% out, which it didn't. It, it made it look 98% better. You could probably get away with it, but because you're crazy and watching this, um, I would imagine that you want it to be perfect like I do. So this is a little trick that I use. Take, take your time. It works pretty much every time on this kind of wheels. Look at that, all gone. Right and early the next day, I polished the super hard paint with exfoliate in a sheer wool pad, then followed up with the waffle straight cut foam pad, and again, exfoliate. The difference was very substantial. Clearly, this car was, I don't know, left outside, and people were either leaning on it or they sat on it, maybe like trying to take a picture because it's a Bentley. I'm not exactly sure, but it very much needed to be polished in a kind of a unique way. Somebody was laying on this car at some point in its life. After the paint was restored, I went back to the wheels to clean up the steel wool marks that I left during the cleaning and sort of brighten up the chrome by hand with my latest concoction. Now again, I'm still in testing mode, but it's really working well on bringing back faded and dull metal. See the last little bits of oxidation? You have to look really closely. They're not the indentations, but the little bit of rust there. After hand polish, you can see that they were lifted and removed. Likewise, if you have a one-inch machine, you can also use the new metal brightener with the DA as well if you have access to one. Afterwards, we vacuumed the interior, steamed the carpets, and then wet vac everything, and it was disgusting, as you can imagine. Oh, that is extra gross. That is black. Usually it's brown, that's black. On the leather and plastics, I scrubbed with lather and a brush, then I hit it with steam to remove the leftover hand, grease, and grime, which for whatever reason is everywhere in this car, at a higher rate than any other car that I've seen, especially one of this significance, meaning a very uh, expensive, rare car. This seems to have had, uh, like uh, maybe mechanic was, was the owner, I'm not exactly sure, but it was very, very greasy inside. Okay, at this point we worked on the exterior, believe it or not, it was really, really hard, I mean physically hard paint, but we got it looking really good. Just played with the door, now I'm working on the steering wheel. As you can see right here, there's a lot of black stuff. Now the difference between this and let's say normal dirt is there's probably gonna be body oils on that. So the first thing we're gonna do is hit it with lather and a brush. If that doesn't remove it, then we'll go in and use uh, Titan 12 degrees. So the reason why is you're gonna change the pH level because now you're fighting something that's a little different. In this case, it's body oil. So we've gotta be a little careful here. You notice I'm just gonna use the brush and not the scrub pad. This is very, very old. If you notice here on this tan area and on the black area, there's this discoloration that's the opposite of the color, in this case, black and the discoloration is a little bit like whitish. Over here, this is tan or khaki, and the discoloration is more brown. And so your instinct is to go in, oh, that's, that's dirty right there. And you would go in and you'd scrub it, and you say, ah, I can't get this. Ah, I can't get the same thing over here. It's dirty, it's brown, I wanna keep cleaning. What happens is that's gonna spread, and what's actually spreading is the top coat, for the lack of a better word, let's call it the clear coat, 
right? The clear coat is being exposed, it's being worn away because this is where the person grabs the steering wheel the most often, right? So as this is being rubbed away, the underneath is being exposed. That whitish color is underneath. So if you were to go in and clean it, you're just gonna expose more of that underneath, thus making it dirtier. Or the same thing on this side, if it was tan, it's gonna to go to brown. If it's black, it's gonna to go towards the white or what the base color would be. So in this case, we're gonna leave it, otherwise we have to re-dye this entire thing. That's a trap that a lot of detailers fall in. This is good enough and good enough is just enough not to go uh, and have to redo this entire steering wheel. So keep that in mind. I repeated the same steps on the rest of the very tired interior. Finally, I applied ammo skin sealant to the paint because I just love the look of skin on Bentleys. I don't know why, it just has this very, it just glows at the same time, it's very smooth, I just love it. Anyways, afterwards, I cleaned up the glass, put the new shiny wheels back on and added some mud tire dressing to it and she was ready to hit the road again for the first time in a long time. Now the Bentley's all done, let's do something I've been waiting a week to do. Let's go for a drive. Ooh. So we're going for our first drive in the six liter W12 2007 Bentley. Now, interestingly enough, this was the first model uh, that Bentley produced after it was acquired by Volkswagen. So the idea here was they wanted to make a little bit more of a economical model, if you could actually say that with Bentley. But nonetheless, I mean, W12, this thing is still a beast. Unbelievable, you can kind of feel it when you drive a Bentley. That's what's so exciting about it. One day I really want to own one. I have my GT3, you guys know that, but my other one is I always wanted to own a Bentley because there's a certain type of feel in here. Everything just feels heavy, feels very sturdy, very like somebody took the time to actually build it and obviously they do. So in this particular one, for whatever reason, the, the car was neglected. Clearly it sat outside for quite some time. They put stickers and band notices or whatever on top of it. But once you clean it up, it looks absolutely unbelievable and you're driving a Bentley for probably, what, under $40,000? Pretty good deal. If you guys are interested in donating your car, I'll put a link down below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next week. See if it turns nice. Get yourself a winner here. And you got a half a tank of gas for free. Things are looking up.